Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. Today I will be talking to you guys about all the books that I read in March. Well, we all know that March was a really strange month and I do not have to tell you why. We won't talk about that in this video, but today I have five slash six-ish books that I have to show you guys every single month in 2020. Whenever I did like a monthly wrap up, I was still currently reading like almost finished one book, which is very annoying. I mean, I still have universities because of certain deadlines. I wasn't able to finish that book that I was like almost done with, which is just really frustrating. But let's just dive into this wrap up and let's just say that March it was a good reading month for me but I thought that it was gonna be better I thought that the books that I have read this month I just thought that I was gonna love them way more than I actually did the first book that I finished in March I have read a big big chunk of this book again in February and finished it at the beginning of March and that is The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black I always say Holly Bourne whenever I want to say Holly Black and the other way around it's just their names are a little bit confusing this is the third book in the Folk of the Air trilogy. I pre-ordered this book when it came out in November and I really wanted to read it immediately. I didn't do that but I did read it right now and I finished a series which is something I cannot say enough <laughs> but I did. I'm not gonna tell you anything about the synopsis of this book but the first book is The Cruel Prince and I think that a lot of you guys know what it is about. You have these three sisters. One of them is Faye and two of them are humans but when they were younger their human parents were killed off and they were taken to fairyland. The humans are hated by the Faye in fairyland and it's just a really I'd say it's a very light fantasy. It is very easy to get into. The fairies are overall really quite mean and just mysterious creatures. You never really know what their intentions are. Just read the story. I cannot really describe what it's about. I was so hyped for the finale and I thought that I was gonna love it. I was just so eager to find out where the story was gonna go next, but I'm sad to say that I liked it, but I definitely didn't love it. On Goodreads, I gave it a 3.75 out of 5 stars, but I think I would lower it a little bit to a 3.5 out of 5 stars. To be honest, I... I mean, for the love of God, I cannot tell you again what happened in the ending. And I think that that is not a good sign. I really cannot recall the ending right now of this book. All I know is that I enjoyed it. I really like Holly Black's writing style. The way that she writes this fairy world is just very whimsical. And it just, I really like the vibes of this world. But the story itself was just not what I was hoping to get from it. So definitely a little bit of a disappointment. The second read that I read this month in March is The Love Hypothesis by Laura Stephen. Again, pre-ordered this book. I was so... Mm, excited to read this because Laura Stephen is one of my favorite authors. She has also written The Exact Opposite of Okay, which is one of my favorite contemporary stories ever. Her writing style is just so humorous and so quirky with also packing a really great punch of just important topics and yeah. The Love Hypothesis. I don't even remember the main character's name anymore. Why am I always like this? So our main character, Caro, she loves physics. She loves science so incredibly much, but she has never really mastered the art of love, of attraction, of chemistry. But then one day on the internet, she finds these pills, which apparently make you so attractive to everyone. It is absolutely insane. So she is very desperate and orders these pills, takes them in, and the rest follows after that. <laughs> Laura Steven said it on, I believe her Instagram or Goodreads herself, like 75% of this book is like a really funny rom-com book. And then the last part of it, it deals more into the idea of consent and it is an LGBTQ romance, which I really liked. Also, Caro had two dads, which I've never read before in a book, which I really liked. And one of her dads was so incredibly funny, but, but for some reason, I didn't really connect with any of the characters. I didn't love Caro. I sometimes felt really annoyed with her. I didn't ship the LGBTQ romance extremely much. I did like them, but it was just was just not really what I hoped from this book. Nevertheless, I enjoyed myself. Ah, I just expected more from it and I cannot really say what it was. But yeah, I still love Laura Steven and I will still buy all of her books when they come out. But unfortunately, this was not my fave of her. And I think I gave this one, let's see, a 3.75 out of 5 stars. Again, I think maybe I'd lower it to a 3.5 just because it was enjoyable, but it's not like my fave book of all time. Next up, three books that I finished this month. Well, books, they're graphic novels. 
novels are the three volumes in the Heartstopper series. So Heartstopper Volume 1, Volume 2, and Volume 3. I did binge read this during my own readathon that I hosted from March 14th until the 15th and I really had such a fun time reading these books. Alice Oseman is one of my favorite new authors. I've discovered her ever since January and have become obsessed and I just want to read all of her books. I've almost accomplished that goal. And these are so well known here in the book community. They are just really cute graphic novels about Charlie and Nick, who you also meet in Solitaire, her other novel. How this is described in the flap of the graphic novel is Charlie and Nick are at the same school, but they've never met until one day when they're made to sit together. They quickly become friends and soon Charlie is falling hard for Nick, even though he doesn't think he has a chance. But love works in surprising ways and Nick is more interested in Charlie than either of them realized. These graphic novels have warmed my heart, especially volume two. As you guys can probably already tell from the description of these books, this is an LGBTQ romance between two boys and one of them didn't really expect that he could also like boys as well. It's kind of spoilery, but not really. So if you don't wanna know anything, don't listen to me for the next minute. But in the first book, it is more so about Nick discovering that he might like Charlie back as well, even though he always thought he was heterosexual. Book number two, it delves more into the idea of being in a relationship with another boy, and it was absolutely adorable. My heart melted throughout this book. I cannot stress that enough. Book three is definitely a little bit more heavy. It goes a little bit more into mental struggles regarding sexuality and coming out, and other people reacting to your relationship as well, which shouldn't matter in general. They were just all so incredibly wonderful. I gave them all five out of five stars because I think that this is a very unique graphic novel and something that a lot of people should read as well. It's just so adorable. <laughs> and then the last book that I almost finished. Oh, I'm so sad that I couldn't finish it before April 1st, but I had a really big paper due on April 3rd, so that had to go first. So unfortunately, I almost, almost finished Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I literally need to read 41 pages of this book right now and then I'm done. You all know what this is about, but I'm very late to the party and just reading this duology and loving it so much. But I mean, of course people can have different opinions, but I think the majority of people will love this book. The plot is really action-packed and amazing as well, but I definitely think that this story mainly focuses on the characters next to the plot. They are just amazing. They are flawed, but they are very realistic. They have really awesome, sometimes super sad background stories. I mean, if you don't know already, this is a heist story in which six very different people have to come together. They are very morally gray characters, which is very awesome to read about. There are so many awesome twists and turns in this book. You're always on the edge of your seat. This is a high fantasy because it takes place in a different world from ours, but it is very easy to read in my opinion. I definitely struggle with high fantasy and reading fantasy in general, but this one I am flying through it. So if you struggle with fantasy as well, this one is definitely a good one to pick up. Do not feel intimidated by the rest of the book community. I did. It was not necessary. And you do not have to read Shadow and Bone, the whole trilogy, uh, before this one. I read the first book in the Shadow and Bone trilogy, did not enjoy that as much, so I was also hesitant to pick up Six of Crows. This is not the same. This is so much better. <laughs> By the way, the characters read like they are definitely at the beginning of their 20s, but they're all 17, and, and especially when I look at the fan art that is in this beautiful collector's edition, I'm just like, these characters do not look 17, honey. <laughs> I am definitely gonna give this one a 5 out of 5 stars. It is high enjoyable and I cannot wait to read Crooked Kingdom the sequel. So as you guys can see the graphic novels and Six of Crows were just five out of five stars read for me. The beginning of the month was just not that amazing. If you've read any of the books that I talked about today let me know in the comments down below. If you guys enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!